Hey golfers, uh, welcome back to Second Swing. We're in the tour event here at Minnetonka and we're back live. This is the first time we've done a live in a while and we've got Larry here. This is going to be fun. Uh, I think this is my first live. It might be. I, I think it is. I think it is. Yeah. you got to thank me for Yeah, good. yeah. Well, we got... Well, we'll... Uh, so, this is fun because behind the scenes actually, there's been a couple of uh, perhaps heated discussions between Larry and myself about uh, my game and the irons I'm playing and how, I guess over the years, my swing has changed. And so when I got fit three years ago, um, I got fit into I-210 irons in a combo with I-500s. Yep. Um, Project X uh, LZ 6.5 shafts. And so I've been playing those for now three years. And, um, you know, we had, we you kind of got into it at the end of last year, so... <laughs> Especially since, you know, your game has evolved, your swing's gotten a lot better, um, you're creating more speed, and, you know, as we were kind of doing content for my irons, you were hitting those versus what you were hitting, and, you know, so I, I decided that, you know, maybe it's time for you to get yeah. fit, and uh, I didn't say it quite that nicely, but, you know, we're, yeah. we're here, and uh, I think we're going to, I think we're going to find out a lot of information you know, you have a desire to play golf at a little bit higher level, you know, be a little more competitive in, in you know, maybe state tournaments and things like that. So, um, I mean, one of the things that I see lacking in your game is spin. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, we did a, we did a video with Rocco, spin is control. We need some spin in your golf game with your irons. Yeah. Uh, do we necessarily need distance? Not really. You know, you've got plenty of speed. You know, you're young, you're strong, your golf swing's better, you're making great contact. You know, we got to get you some spin. So, you know, in, in my opinion, irons are specific distance clubs. They're not distance clubs. You know, everybody kind of walks in the bay here and, and goes, wow, you know, my seven iron goes that far. Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. As long as it has the right launch and spin conditions to hold a green. But if you're going to play a golf course, you know, say the, say the state opens at Hazeltine. Right. You know, where the greens are, the greens are like this, yep. you know, you can't go in there with a seven iron that's spinning at 4,000 because you're never going to hold a right. green. So really want to get you something where you feel like you can use one, your strength off the tee and then get where you can have a seven, eight, six iron in your hand and feel like that you can hit that yeah. green every time. Right. And I think in terms, you know, for me, I I don't have a problem with distance or speed. So I think that was one thing too that you realized loft wise, making sure the spin is is right, also giving me the right loft where through the bag, uh, the gapping works too. So I think, um, and there's a couple of models I'm personally interested in yep. uh, and looking at. Uh, I know I-230 is one. Um, I know, I mean, I did test your irons, yep. LB1s. Correct. Uh, it potentially an option. Uh, so there's a couple of things out there and I'm, I'm just excited because I think, you know, I, I wouldn't say the iron part is the weakest part of my game, but I think it's certainly, I mean, it's, you got to hit greens to have chances to make birdies. And right. so that's kind of where I'm at in my game is trying to make a bunch of those birdies and take advantage of those. Well, yeah. And, and like I said, you know, spin is control. We need to get you something that you're comfortable. Hey, you know, we fit indoors in perfect conditions. When you go out and play golf, you don't play in perfect conditions. Right. You've got moisture, you've got grass, you've got things that get in the way between that contact between the ball and the club. And if, and if we're borderline spin here, I get a little scared that when somebody goes out with your speed that doesn't spin it enough in here, what's gonna happen when you know you hit it, you hit a drive in the medium rough and you got an eight iron and all of a sudden you're hitting it yeah. and the first words out of your mouth are get down. Right, right, which I've had that <laughs> happen to me, especially right. in the top of my set that I have IF500s right now. Yeah. So I think that's another piece too where I know you looked at that and saw my profile as a player. I think, and that's the thing, three years ago, I kind of had this open face, like, uh, you know, the face angle was open. I was sitting my seven iron, like right. 165 carry, maybe that far. You yep. can actually see, I think I put the link in the description uh, for my previous fitting. So uh, you can go look at that if you need to, but um, it's it's changed a ton. So yep. now I actually tend to drop more than I actually tend to open, you know, block it or fade it. So right. things right. have actually changed. And I think that's why which, I really Which inherently this. brings the spin down in your golf shot. Right. Exactly. So, exactly. Uh, let's get you hitting some golf ball, okay. and uh, right. let's see where we go. So, All right. uh, Pro V1, Pro V1X. Yeah, Pro V1. Pro V1. We've got that there. Yep. 
Uh, let's grab your seven iron. Let's hit a few shots and let's let's see what happens. Sweet. Sweet. Uh, did we put this in already? Yeah, I think we got it all set up. Okay. Um, Perfect. We got we got really good people that'll figure that out. I know. I know. I know. I, I was I did I did get a chance to warm up a little bit beforehand. So I know. Uh, I'm not totally. You know, this is a different in the sense of most fittings where people are at this right. point during that conversation probably warming up so where so where i mean where do you normally play well i'm i am currently uh, a member at rum river hills which okay. is up north of minneapolis about a half hour okay um which actually that course i don't really actually hit irons a ton but hit a lot you know, of wedges i hit a lot of wedges yep. um but there's also i i I have some aspirations this year of playing more competitive events. Right. And so, um, so if you I, I don't it, plan on playing, you know, a 6,100 yard course every time I play golf. Yeah. So if you get out somewhere, if you get out somewhere, you get out to, you get out to Chaska town course for the state open or something where you're, you know, you're stretched back to 7,000 yards off the back tees, right. You know, TPC twin cities, you're, you're going to need, yeah. to, you're going to need to have, you know, middle iron play right. that's that's going to uh, mm -hmm. perform the way we need it to perform. So yep. Let's hit a couple shots and then let's talk about it. So See, that's a pretty stock standard yeah, shot. So there, for you right there's now. a there's a pretty stock shot there. You know, we're 93 miles an hour. We're 129 on the ball speed. It's got great smash factor, carries 195, rolls out to 191, you know, 5,900 spin, not bad. Let's hit, let's hit a couple more. So, and that's the, the discussion that even, I think started the whole thing was, right. I think I was, testing some iron um, right. in here and you were seeing kind of how far it was going. Yeah. And yeah. And then, I, mean, I mean, do I need to hit a, a seven iron that carries 180 plus? That's kind of, I think. Yeah. I mean, you're launching, I mean, here, here's a, here's a perfect example. So if you're looking at the PGA tour numbers, we're launching it, they're launching around 17 on average spinning at 7,000. Yeah. You're about a thousand less than PGA tour with PGA tour speed. Mm -hmm. So, Here's the thing that really bothered me though is, so that's your seven iron. Do me a favor, let's grab your six iron. Yeah, that's where this could get interesting. Yeah, because this, this is where we break. This is where yep. we go from the two tens, right? Yep, so this the, is now the I-500. Now we're going to, now we're going to the I-5, now we go to the I-500. Let me see here, let me throw a six iron in there. All right, so let's see, let's see what we get now. I mean, I can sound, it feels and sounds differently yeah, already. So, so look you know. at there. So now we just, now we just carried, the last seven iron carried 183 yards. <laughs> that carried 213 with 4,300 spin. So now we've got a 30 yard gap yeah. between our six and our seven iron. You know, and I think this is where I really started to jump on you about, <laughs> yeah. about your set makeup. Yeah. But again, a few years ago, you weren't swinging. You weren't swinging quite as good. Right. But also look at the spin. You know, that's oh, yeah. spinning almost two thousand less. Right. That's you don't a want lot. two thousand. I you know if, if I'm in that one ninety to two hundred range, you know, I find myself hitting a lot of awkward short swing six irons. Well, and here's the problem with the modern golf ball. I mean. It, Years ago, when we we're playing balada golf right. balls, where where half swings that golf ball retain the spin. Well, ever since 2000 and the Pro V1 and all the solid golf balls, golf ball half shots with the modern golf ball yeah. really spin low. Right. So now you're gonna do, so do me a favor. You hit me. You hit me your little half shot okay. with your six iron to try to make a 15 yard gap between yeah. that and your seven iron. So I'm choking down a little bit and kind of just swinging a little bit shorter than, than I usually would.
Okay, look at that. So you brought, you brought the distance down exactly what we wanted. Well, look what you did to the spin rate. Yeah, so I mean, it's, I mean look at the roll out there. You could, yeah, you took the spin rate <laughs> yeah. down to 3,800, and now you carried it right, but that's in the back bunker. Or right. over yeah. the green or out of bounds. Right. It's got, tw I, it's got yeah. 20 yards of roll out. I mean, that just, you know, so you know how to hit the shot. Yeah. The problem is you don't have a right implement in your hand. Right, right. And you know my, you know my favorite line, you know, it's like trying to eat, it's like trying to eat soup with a fork. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't work very well. Yeah. Yep. All right. Hit me. Okay. So now let's do this. You grab your seven iron again. Okay. Let's hit a, let's hit a full out, 100%. We got we got to hit it a little further with our seven iron. Let's hit that shot. Okay. Okay. Maybe let's pick see up. How, that. Let's see how far we can get that seven iron to go. Okay. So we ball speed goes up a little bit. There we go. Where's there's the one ninety one carry. But again, spin rate goes down. Okay. So now grab me your six iron. <laughs> You give me a full. You give back me, and forth here. You know, well, you give me full out six iron now. All right. It's going to turn over a little bit. Look at that. 216 at 3,600 with 16 yards of rollout. Yeah, that's just, that's not a good, uh, no, no. A good recipe no. there. And it, oh. No. Um, so, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of where the, you know, our, our friendly kidding started to come from watching you do this. Yeah. I mean, this is too hard. You're, ask, you're asking way too much of your talent to try to hit the shots. Yeah. Because now, what are you going to do? You want to hit little baby draws with your seven iron. But the, now to try to hit your six iron and bring it down a little bit, now you're standing out there trying to hit a little cut mm -hmm. and try to make it spin. Mm -hmm. That's way too much. That's way too much work, Drew. It really yeah. is. You know, you need a set of clubs in your bag that, hey, the best players in the world, what do they want? They want, you know, everybody talks about the window. Yeah. And the window is they want their pitching wedge to start here, and they want their four iron to start here, and they all start in the same window, and they just drop. At different points. At different yeah. points, drop, you know, somewhere between 10 and 15 yards apart. Yeah. Okay. Well, your window. You got a great window. The only problem is your seven iron drops here and your six iron drops, yeah, I know. drops there. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, it, it felt sometimes like that was a concern um, out on the course. And it, it's, I mean, I, I never actually, I, I think a couple of summers ago, I went and tested it and it wasn't a huge right. difference. But as the swing has evolved more and more, I've right. seen that become a bigger problem you right know? so i'm sitting 195 yards it's either depending on the wind or whatever it might be it's all right i'm either going to hit this kind of low yeah. punchy six or i'm going to hit the big seven all right so this is not a sales pitch for my iron <laughs> but since we have a full set of them here so do me a favor let's hit let's hit okay we got here. Okay, the we LB got, we got, Yeah, we got the we got the seven iron. So let's hit the seven iron. Let's hit a couple shots with the seven iron. Okay. You wanna? Are we gonna change the? Oh sure. Why Might not? be a good idea. Yeah, why not? I already saw. I saw some people were asking what clubs that we're already hitting. Which, I think there's enough people in the chat that. Figured that out anyway. LB one. These, I mean, I mean, I know you said this wasn't a, it's not a sales pitch, but I, can I, I, they look awesome. You can, so, you can, you can, you, you can say that you like them. I kind of like them too. Yeah. Well, I, I think I think you would, you know, I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. It's a hit little another. bit open on there, but yeah, let's hit another one with that. Shafts a little bit softer than what you need. Okay. That's S three. I would definitely at your speed, we'd probably be an X one or yeah, yeah, yeah. or 
Project X, maybe 6.5. I swung softer on that one. Okay. Give it softer. Give I it do a, think, give, too, because... Yeah, hit, hit one, hit one, hit one a, a little harder. Okay. I think part of it, too, the lie angle is... Lie angle's a little, lie angle's right a little bit those, different. So yep, we're a little bit... You might see that a little bit out to flatter. the right. Yeah, I can definitely tell that's yeah. impacting it. Yeah. But, but okay. Take away, take away the little right because of the lie angle, but now we've got a spin rate up there around 6,600. We're launching a little bit higher. That ball's coming down a lot softer. Right. Okay, so now, Grant, now I've got the six iron. So let's see the difference between a set. We're just okay. talking about a set of the same rather than splitting right, that. Right, right, Rather than splitting kind of that Getting set. out of the combo. Right, getting out of the combo. Mm-hmm. So let's see what we do with the six iron now. Okay, look at that. 5,600 on the spin versus what were we at? Was it 48? 4, 38, 4,000? Yeah. I had 38 on one of them? Yeah. yeah. Hit, me one, hit me one more with that. That one felt good too. Yeah. So, you know, we're talking about you were carrying you were carrying the seven iron around 70, 71. Now you're at 85. Yeah. There's 14 yards. Yeah. Which, it's your speed. That's what I would expect. Yeah. So that's why we need to go down the road. I mean, if you want to split a set, split it at the four iron. Yeah, yeah. You Which know? I've now I, I now at the time I could I right. needed probably I think it was more of a forgiveness piece I was looking yeah. for at, at that kind of the seven to six. Um, well, but now I don't think I really need that. No, I'll give you a perfect example. You know, one of the one of the players from Minnesota came in, okay, and found out same thing. You know, played high school golf, everything's great. Started to get a little stronger now. All of a sudden, played a couple tournaments where the greens were. Rock right. hard, all of a sudden going, man, I need spin. Yeah. So now you end up now you end up with a, a set, a split set of tailor mades where where the four I I bet went full Colin Morikawa set on them. Yeah. Four iron was seven seventy. The five and the six, the five and the six were were the MC, the cavities, okay. and then seven through seven through pitching wedge were blades. Yeah. Did them all at the blade loft, so weak in the weak in the four, five, and six a degree. Uh -huh. So now there's flight in their yep. spin. Okay. Now from there you can adjust. I mean, if there's hey, we need to take it. You know, you look at Max Homa set, great set of golf clubs. You know, mm -hmm. he's playing great golf. He's got a T one hundred S that's in at twenty two degrees. So that's yep. the stronger T one hundred. Then he puts the five iron at the regular T100. So now there's five degrees between that four iron and the five iron. Yeah. Then he goes. Then he goes to. Um, then he goes the, the, to the, blades. Yeah. From six the iron point. on through. Well, now he's got. Now he's got control. He's got flight. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, that's a modern set of clubs. I yeah. mean, that's why a lot of people in my irons go. Well, hey, how come you didn't make a two and a three iron? Well, nobody is going to use them. Well, uh, yeah. I, uh, the other reason I didn't is because of that thing right there that you're hitting. Yeah. It doesn't spin it. It doesn't spin enough anyway. Right. You know, the minute the Pro V1 came out, we took anywhere from a thousand to fifteen hundred RPM spin away from players. Right. On iron shots. So it kind of makes two and three irons kind of unusable. That's right. why I'd rather see somebody play a utility or right. a hybrid, hybrid in their set of clubs. Seven so, wood even. So now the question becomes, where do we go with a set of clubs? So what do you, you said you had some ideas of what I you did, wanted well, to try. Yeah. Um, the I-230s are obviously, because I, yep. I, like, I, I like the look and, and the feel of the I-210s. I, I did, uh, right. and I still do. Um, and the I-230s, I got just to hit them a few times and doing videos and stuff. Right. So I've, I've been interested in those. Um, I mean, I'm not totally opposed either to you know, the LB1s. And, right. and then obviously moving into something, maybe f five iron, four iron, whatever. That's a top, little more forgiving. A little bit, little bit of a cavity there for some forgiveness. Right. Um, and then, I mean, the T100s too, probably. Yep. Um, kind of a, 
a same thing, uh, but even at point two, I, I'm not uh, out, I mean, opposed to kind of the Homa set there too, the 620 blades. Um, but then the T100s, I think the T100s are almost blade-like as a cavity iron. So yeah. I kind of think well, they're... Well, if, if you go not. back, if you go back to the initial design, when it, I was still a Titleist and we brought out the AP2. The whole yeah. idea of the, the AP2, the T100 series, is to give a set of golf clubs basically six iron through pitching wedge that have a, that has a little bit of technology, but it's going to perform like a blade. Okay, one of the things that we found out in, you know, after spending almost 40 years on tour, if a tour player is going to miss an iron shot, he's going to miss a long iron and he's going to miss it a little thin. Okay. okay you, don't see, you don't see tour players laying the sod over iron shots. Right. Okay. Especially a four iron. Especially a four iron. Yeah. If they're going to do anything, they're going to hit it maybe a groove or two low. And the ball's, the ball's not going to carry. Right. So the whole idea with the, the AP and then the T100 series is to give a little more weight in the bottom and the long irons to help that okay. ball stay in the air and help yeah. it launch like a little that a lot. bit. Plus, with the change in the golf ball, we know that ball does better being launched than it does. You know, you don't see... I mean, you're too young anyway, but, you know, back in the day where you'd hit the low right, oh, yeah. where the, you know, you'd hit these shots. You only see that now if it's a low face strike. Yeah, if it's it a goes, really low face and yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't retain its spin. But, you know, back in the day, you'd see these beautiful long irons and they go. <laughs> right, yeah. And they drop. Well, that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. Okay. So let's do this. Let me grab, um, let me grab something I want to start with. Yeah. Now, like on the ping side where, okay, maybe there's a little bit more forgiveness with the 230. Yeah. We also have the option with ping where they retro the loft. Yeah. Okay. So if we look at it here and go, hey, this is the club I really want, but I want it a little. So we order it in a degree weaker mm -hmm. than, it, than it currently is. Yeah. It's not going to hurt us. Right. No. You know, till and you that, get it out in the real world. Yeah, well, I think it just for the gapping purposes, the, having that option is, yeah. is huge. That ping even offers it in the first place. And that's place. why I always tell my fittings that, you know, hey, we fit you in here. You go out and play some golf. Come back. Yeah. Let's have a conversation. How they perform? Do we need to go a little stronger? Do we need to go a little mm -hmm. weaker? Do we need to go a little upright, a little flatter? I mean, until you get it out on turf and and start hitting shots. Yeah. I mean, that's the ultimate, that's the ultimate test of the right. golf club. So right. let me grab something. Okay. Um, in the meantime, while Larry's grabbing some stuff, uh, we can kind of look at some of these questions here in the, in the chat. Um, so this, okay. Someone asked about Larry's iron. Uh, this is the LB one. So for those who aren't familiar with handmade sticks, um, Larry, and has kind of been building this sort of brand within a brand here at Second Swing, and it's got a, he includes several kind of boutique club makers that do really good stuff for us. Sell it on uh, on Second Swing through the Handmade Sticks website, and so um, that's something that uh, he kind of added to this was his own set of irons. He's also got putters. Um, I believe you're working on wedges, so uh, uh, there's yes, sir. So there's more coming, but it's just a classic blade look, and it's. It looks really cool. It's got the Handmade Sticks logo on it. So um, something to keep in mind if you're kind of that collector. It's also a little bit, runs a little bit cheaper than most iron sets. So um, I will be honest, that is one reason why I'm interested. So uh, yes, <laughs> someone's like LB stands for Larry Bobka. That's, uh, that's good, that's good uh, detective work on that one. Well, I can tell you what, well, I can't really tell you what my wife says LB stands for, but. <laughs> Lazy something. <laughs> I wouldn't say that you're lazy making a set of irons for people to well, that's cut true. Order. Hang on. <laughs> so I knew the right shaft. Do you have any cutting shafts here? Hmm. Now, typically in a fitting, uh, I got I got a chance to warm up, and during that kind of initial conversation for those who were watching earlier, um, that initial conversation, kind of getting the base point of my game, my clubs, 
Um, usually that takes place kind of back and forth while you might be hitting shots in a fitting. So I was up obviously behind the desk there with Larry for, I guess, the sake of the presentation today. But I had warmed up before that and I was loose. I'd had hit a few shots with my clubs. So um, that's in, in, in the circumstance where you come in and get fit, you'll kind of be here hitting shots back and forth with the fitter. And our fitters usually do a great job of getting that baseline information, learning about your game, club, the clubs you play, um, kind of maybe where your common miss is, what you're looking for in the fitting, and also a little bit more about the course you might be playing too. Um, you know, if it's firm conditions, if you play on soft conditions, um, things like that. So uh, uh, just if you're maybe wondering about that, the beginning part of that fitting process, that's what that is. And now we're kind of in that point. We're getting to it now where Larry's grabbing some of the clubs I'm interested in, some of the models I'm interested in, and this is kind of that testing portion um, where that baseline is already set. Now it's going to be me testing a couple of the models that I'm interested in. Generally, in a fitting, we have about an hour. And so that gives you, you know, we don't end up testing or I guess people getting fit don't usually, um, you know, test six, seven clubs in a fitting. There's just simply not time. So um, usually it's three to four, usually something that obviously a lot of people are, when they get schedule that fitting, they're probably interested in a model or two and they've done a little bit of research, kind of thinking they have some ideas and are usually our fitters usually throw that in the mix with a couple of recommendations on, on their own as well. Yeah, and we're working here in the back bay and, you know, since I've been traveling to Dallas and yeah. PGA show and heading to Scottsdale now, um, all the new stuff had moved around over in the last six weeks. <laughs> so I apologize for taking longer than I normally do, but it's, uh, you know. Okay, what do we got here? Well, that's what happens when you don't show up at work for a couple of years. <laughs> So we've got we we got an I two thirty I two thirty okay. yeah you know and let me find my mouse where'd my mouse go oh I saw it there it is oh there it is again there we go yeah perfect all right for seven iron we are taking that out one thing too I like I like the uh, that ping with I think was it. I-59s maybe, they added the extra grooves. There's like more grooves on the face. I think it was I-59. Yeah, you know, ever since the ever since the 2010 groove ruling that really limited the depth in the the angle of the of the groove, you know, yeah. manufacturers have been trying to, to try figure to out. You know, if you look at my iron, it's a very traditional groove. Yeah. You know, there's you know, on the seven iron, there's 13 grooves. That's probably got about 17 or 18. So they felt like in their testing that there's that they felt like they wanted more grooves smaller yeah. to create the spin. Yeah. And it's, okay. it's a different type of different kind of uh, philosophy, I'm sure. Yeah, of, every, everybody has everybody has a little bit of different philosophy. I mean, the thing that really holds in the groove is when you really take um, the top edge is what really held it. Yeah. Well, back in the day, you could have a sharper top edge and you could have a deeper groove. So you had a, you had yeah. a top edge that grabbed the ball and then you, had, then you had a deeper, wider groove that could hold the moisture and could hold oh. the grass. And that's why it spun so much. Yeah. But, you know, it, it, mm -hmm. in some ways it, it hurt players, in some ways it helped. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. All right. So let's see what we're going to do with this. So I two thirty. This is the LZ. I two thirty. So this is kind of, this is kind of your sweet spot. What you, you know, you're thinking that, hey, yeah. if I'm gonna order a set of clubs, this is this is this is the Drew. I mean, this I've is been the in, Drew club. As, as soon as I found out about these, I was intrigued by them. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, this is, you know, and, and you know Rocco, who we see all the time, has yep. them in the bag and absolutely loves them. Retro lofts his also. You are kind of seeing, you know, I, I think there was a time when I went back to, uh, or I was, I guess, thought I was going to need, you know, the back to standard lie angle. And I'm seeing, you know, I, I probably do need them upright. So yeah, I would, you know, I, you know, this would be a perfect, this would be a perfect situation in a fitting to go, okay, you know what, maybe I don't think that, but I would start you at the lie angle that you've been playing for yeah. the last few years. And then if you take them out and you come back, you know, a month or two into it and say, hey, you know, Larry, this is a little bit less, then we just, then we just bend them a degree 
splatter and see how yeah. they go. Right. And that felt good. That felt really good. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, in decent numbers there, spins spins a tad low. Okay. You know, I would I would say definitely if we're gonna go I two thirty, I would def I would definitely I would definitely order them a degree week. Yeah. For sure. That one's fat. Yeah, you can tell. Can you tell that one's fat? By the yeah, uh, that's yeah, been. that's the one. That's the one you're yelling. That's the one you're yelling to get down. Yeah. All right. Let's grab something else here. I hit one for the fun of it here. Okay. So let me have that. Let me have that back. Okay. Yeah, I like that one better than the last. But that spin still. I feel like it was pretty comparable to my clubs. Still pretty low. Yeah. Even with the face open a little bit too. Which yeah. I know in our initial testing, the I-230 actually did spin lower than the I-210 at the same moment. It is a little bit so, less. Yeah. But again, that's where, you know, as a fitter, Use the use the ability the of, retro of, yeah, to, yeah right of that's what that's to for. build you a correct set. That's what it's for. Yeah. So now, okay, let's hit let's hit I fifty nine. I fifty nine. Yeah. Which you're gonna go well, you know that's kind of blady and well it 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 is, but it also I can feel a weight difference in it too. Well, till till I till I made my own golf clubs for myself. Um, yeah. I can't quite do that. So. That's what that's what I played. Yeah. I was playing I, I was playing I fifty nine. You know? So let's let's hit a few with the I fifty nine and let's see what we get. I think there's a standard a little is it one degree higher loft, I think, than I two thirty? Something like that. I used, I used to know all I used to know all those specs. Now at my age I have to go back and look at what they are. Well, I also, being that I do all these videos on the channel, I kind of should know them too. I, I'm pretty darn sure this is 34. That's what, I that's what, Google, that's what Google's for. Yeah. I remember memorizing textbooks for tests in school, and now you yeah. can just look that stuff up. But. That one was hit a little bit, little bit thin, yeah. but it's still kind of... I like the way it turned out even. Yep. Okay. That's the fat one. So you hit you hit a couple more with that. Okay. Really? That's a lot of speed. <clears throat> oh, there's a good ball. Yeah, see that's... The spin's up a little bit, but it's not up all like... No, it's not. So up, you'd still go not, up higher in loft, and then someone not, did ask too about the potential for a ball change to increase spin. I mean, I know you you kind of said in general the premium ball, and you're referring to Pro V ones, but they still are overall low spinning golf balls yep. compared to what you, I guess, your baseline is. But as soon as I find a Mizuno wrench, we're gonna be we're gonna be we're gonna be doing good. Oh. As you know, interesting little wild card in the mix. Do no runs. Yeah, they're just not as high spinning as I would uh looking wrenches anywhere. Anticipate. No. 
I think somebody was asking for Mizuno iron, so that person's going to get their Mizuno iron here. You need a Mizuno I didn't even see exactly which model he had. 223? Okay. Either way, I'm excited because I did play Mizuno irons back in the day before I went to Ping. I think they're the best feeling irons. Again, I'll get the spin up. Find the wrench. Uh, we got one coming. You got one coming? Perfect. We got one coming. Because we have a drawer full of wrenches, but we do not have a Mizuno wrench in there. Well, like you said, things were getting moved around a little bit yeah. when you were gone. So. So here is a Mizuno 221 with... Oh, 221, okay. 221. Nice. With dynamic Volvo 200. Ooh. Let's see, what, let's see what we do with this. All right, I played, oh, it was the MP15s. I played those before I went to the i2. I played those for a while. So you played a Mizuno blade? I've played Mizuno irons before. Okay, so let's see what we do here. Okay. That was a little bit of a miss. I'm trying yeah. to hit one good here. Wow, that was, did I swing harder for some reason? No. That came out no. hot. So, you know, we're still in that range. You know, we'd like to see over 6,000. Right. So let's hit one more. Which I don't think six, I mean, 6,000 is going to be more than I'm used to. Right. But it's still a little higher. See how this one, this one started left of that one. 58. With the draw. Okay. So do me a favor, move one a little bit up in your stand. Move it up? About a half a golf ball. Okay. Half a golf ball. Okay. Half a golf ball. Not much. A little fat. A little fat. Try that again. Interesting. See, that one felt pretty good, I thought. Yeah. So, yes, would we consider a golf ball? I mean, you know, that's a weaker lofted. It's a weaker lofted blade iron. Yeah. With an extra stiff shaft, and you definitely don't. I, I mean, I need yeah. more than 34 on my 7 iron is what you're saying. Yeah. So, here, go back, go back and hit, go back and hit, go back and hit mine again. Because yours is 36? Mine is 36. So that's where, you know, you know, there's a lot of companies out there and there's a lot of design and everybody's worried about the distance. But when it comes to stronger players, you've got to be careful what you do with the loft of their golf club. Mm -hmm. So do me a favor, hit me a couple, hit me a couple more with these. There's, oh, there's 62. See, that was even with a little bit of a softer swing on that one. I yeah. just, I can tell, club speed was down a little bit. But I, I mean, generally, right, you swing harder right. on an iron, it spins more. And I still spun that one higher, so. Yeah, so what we're, what we're really seeing here is. It was a little fat, too. It was still, yeah, but we need, you need loft on your golf club. Yeah. Because if you don't have loft on your golf clubs, and we don't need the split between the six iron and the seven iron, yeah. that's going to create this thirty-yard gap. Because we know you're inherently low spin. 
Yeah. Now, from a golf ball standpoint, I mean, I'd have you walking out the door going, man, I'd grab a, ti- I'd grab a dozen of those Tiger. The Act Tiger Bridge. Yeah, the Bridge Bridge stones. Bridge stones. Absolutely. And see what you do with those. Because mm-hmm. those are the extra, like, I mean, X, S, extra spin. The spinniest golf ball on the market. Yeah. That would not, I mean, right now, that wouldn't hurt you. It wouldn't hurt you one bit. Hmm. Saw someone, uh, <laughs> someone commented to ignore, Here. <laughs> ignore Larry's advice and get the Cobra LTD X irons. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and hit that, and hit him, and hit him miles. There's, I could hit that seven iron pretty good. <laughs> All right, give me one second here, and we'll put the. We'll put the ball in. Oh, I see what you're doing. So they don't have the RCT, so we got the we got the dots on. No, we so. got the old we got we got the we got the old school dot. Yeah. All right. So let's see what this does. Isn't that funny how that's old school now, Larry? So now we've got we've <laughs> got yeah we've got an old yeah we got old school we got an old school golf ball with an old school iron. Yeah. Let's see what kind of spin rate we create. Well, it's, if you hit it low on the face like that, it'll spin more. Actually, I gotta make sure I. Yeah, I'll make sure you put that dot up. But even that, I, I feel like that. I know. I mean, it wasn't even your best move at it. See, that's interesting because those are two back to back swings. One was like, that one was, I mean, being nitpicky, that one was a little fat. Yep. And the one before that was thin, and they had more or less the same spin. Yeah. So hit one more. That was more solid. So okay. there you are. So there, with the spinniest ball in golf, you're you're only at 6,200, but we launch it a little bit higher. Yeah. I mean, that's a much more controllable golf shot. Mm-hmm. So if we got you in a little bit stronger shaft and a little bit more upright lie, that ball's going to fly pretty darn pretty straight. Going to fly pretty darn good and pretty darn straight. Thinking, you know, yeah. And you're really not giving up. I mean, you were carrying you were carrying yours about eighty three. Yeah. Okay. So you give up a couple yards right. in carry, but now it's not releasing. You know. And then, hey, what's your six iron going to do next? Then your six iron's just going to go a little bit further. Yeah. I mean. Grab the six iron now. So we're at like shade under 180, probably 180, 178 yeah. on that one. Yep. <coughs> oh, I hit that one a little hard. I turned it over a little bit. Yeah. And that's you. I mean, that. look at that. That's your inherent miss. Yeah. That's the one. That's the one with your club that's, well, that's on at thirty eight hundred. Well, the, with the upright line angle, yeah. that thing's going way over there. But let me hit one that's actually that's actually solid. Yeah, it's actually a good swing. You're doing good for you know February in Minnesota. That one will be probably a little bit more not exactly not exactly not exactly in mid season form. Right. But see, like that's that was more reflective, I think, because we're getting right. But the there, carry is you 13 were, yard dip, so 14 you yard carried the last one, one set, you carried the seven iron 178, you carried that 192, that's 14 yards. Right. That's Which what is, I would expect. At your for. speed, that's what I would expect. Yeah. So the question really becomes, you know, it, it's a set of irons. We definitely need to go something weaker lofted. We need yeah. to go with some we need to go with something that that is gonna be a cohesive set, at least five iron through. Okay. Pitching wedge, yeah. and then at the four iron, then we might, you know, if you feel like you need something, because really at the end of the day, so if we talk about this, so you got a driver in the bag, right? Yeah. Got a three wood you like? Yeah. What's the next club after that? Next club is the top of my I five hundreds. The top three, of your I five hundred. So three iron. So it's a three iron. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we do. Maybe we do. A utility. Yeah. We do Which a I utility kinda, three yeah. iron. And then four iron through four iron through pitching wedge is just is just a, a set of traditionally lofted irons mm-hmm. that help you play golf. 
So one question, and I actually saw this in the chat, and I was gonna, I actually have, I'm curious about it too. Right. The the height. Um, I'm not, I mean, I'm not. I don't have anything to worry about height wise, do I? Because I, I don't think I, I wasn't hitting it too high, was it? No. Because no. that's, no, that's that's a concern one, that's if you one. have too much spin. But I don't, I don't have too much spin. No, you don't have too much spin, and you don't have too much. I have speed, but I don't. It's not speed that's generating too, getting it too high. Where like on a windy day, it's not absolutely not. Because your your land angle is still around fifty. Right. On that. Yeah, forty nine there. Yeah, you you want that. I mean, yeah. You don't want it. You don't want it coming in any. For you, if it comes in any shallower, then we're not going to stop. We're right. Which that stop. last ball, the last ball where I yeah. turned it, which, yeah. If I can, let's see if I can maybe hit a high draw and see if it can like. What that angle is here. Kind of went after that one. And there you go. 50. The, yeah. yeah. Still got a land angle of 50, 121 feet in the air. Spins at 5,200. I mean, we weren't spinning. We weren't. That shot with your club was at about 4,000. Yeah. And was carrying, two oh, yeah. Thir was carrying 213. So do me a favor. That's a really, really good six iron. So you grab, you grab the seven iron in that set, and let's hit a really good seven iron. Kind of try to hit that draw again? Try to hit that draw again. Kind of that. I swung pretty fast on that one, 296. Yeah. But. I'm getting loose. <laughs> so look at that high draw. So that's a, that's 186. Yeah. So that's about, what did we carry the last one? 200. I think it was just over. The, uh, the, the one I just hit was. The six iron. Yeah, it was 200. 200. So there's your 14 yards. Yeah. Absolutely. It launches a little bit higher than yours. You know, the spin rate, you're going to live pretty much in that world around 6,000 with your seven iron. Yeah. You know. A draw is going to go a little bit less. At 127 feet at that land angle, I mean that that's an absolutely beautiful that's an absolutely beautiful shot. I mean, I'm taking that every time. Yeah, you're taking that every time, and that's a con that's a controlled shot. And again, the rollout is the rollout. You know, the theoretical rollout is five yards. Right. Yeah. It's not 12 yards. Right, which I like. Yeah. Especially so, on a draw. So hit, hit one more with that. So. He's also looking, feel really good, by the way. Ooh, club face turned over in my swing there. That's going to go left. Yeah, but we still. Oh, see? That, we, but yeah. look, okay, so you I like hold that. it, but it's virtually the same shot. It didn't go any further. Left. Yeah. The spin went down by further. 100. That's actually, that's crazy. Because <laughs> I, I, I hit that, and it definitely felt, you know, when you pull one on the course, and you're right. like, that's going to be way out like too far i'm gonna go deep left and have this super tough up and down that was what the thought that came to my mind well, and that's why but now i'm just okay. high left you know my really really good friend mark o'meara for a long time what did he tell what did he tell tiger when he came out on tour hit your putts the right speed and hit your irons the right distance you might miss them left you might miss them right but you want to hit your irons the right distance if you do that there's a perfect example of the shot before you hit absolutely perfect right next to the hole. That one you pulled a little bit, flew the same. So now you got a 20 footer left of the pin. You not you didn't yeah. hit it over the green and you're chipping back or you're in a back bunker or whatever. That's control. That's where spin gives you control. Height gives you control. You launching it a little bit higher and spinning it a little bit more yeah. gives control. But that's a 36 degree seven iron. Right. Right. Compared to your 32. I yeah, think. I got 32 right now. You got 32. So. That's four degrees. And you're carrying it, you're carrying it basically the same distance mm -hmm. with better launch conditions. Yeah. Yeah. You could win so, a golf you could win a golf tournament this well, summer. Well, that's there's more to that's golf. The whole there's idea, more to golf right? than hitting irons. But. Okay. Uh, All right, so but well, so that, yeah. so that was this was the LB one. I think people are right. asking. This is the LB. This is the LB one. Larry's irons. Uh, yep. So I think clearly we need something. Right. That's at thirty. Well, and the seven iron is thirty six degrees. Right. So clearly. So we're looking at something. You know, we're looking at Mizuno two twenty one. Yeah. May probably looking at Taylor made the MB iron. Okay. We're looking at we're looking at Titleist MBs. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
ping. If we go ping, it's got to be I-59s. Okay. So what, 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 okay. Okay. So or we can go 230s, but we retro. have to retrospect them. Okay. I mean, are you going to be, this is, now this is, this is where, this is where it doesn't matter to me. Okay. Yeah. This is, this is where I'm out of this. It's because the you're the guy, thing. you're the yeah. guy that has to buy these and look at these and play these. And the last thing I want you doing on Saturday morning or Sunday morning is cursing my name that I talked you into a set of golf clubs wow. that you didn't like. Yeah. So we know what the specs are. Yeah. Basically, we need a weaker lofted yep. golf club. We need a spinnier golf ball. You're definitely going to, as the season starts, you definitely should try that golf ball. Yeah. And yep. see how it performs. You know, on the other side is how is it going to perform off your driver and around the greens? Because you really, to me, a golf ball needs to perform from 100 yards in. Yeah. Can you score with that? Like you said, your golf course, you hit a lot of wedge shots. Right. Okay. Is that going to be a good ball for mm -hmm. you on your golf course? Yeah. So, right. and then in terms of the combo situation, like, I mean, I'm obviously not going to do it at seven, right. six. Um, you think four iron or even because you were you were mentioned getting in a utility iron for like a three iron. Yep. You think even four down? I think four. Something? I think four think down. So? I think four down. I mean, first of all, you're not going to at your speed. You're not going to hit a tremendous amount of four irons. Right. Okay. The other part about it is I don't want you pulling. If you're between a four and a five iron, I want you pulling that four iron and having confidence in your ability to hit that shot not worried about, well, gee, if I miss this a little bit, it's not going to spin enough. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, again, it, your speed and your height and your ability to, to hit the golf ball, I mean, I would stay, I would stay with just a blade four iron for now and put that utility in. You know, you can always make a decision down the road. You can always make a decision down the road that, yeah. hey, you know, this isn't quite performing. But, I mean, you think about it in a month of golf, how many four irons do you really hit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's not many. I mean, if I do, it's probably more off the tee than anything. Which... More, it's yeah, it's more off the tee, but it's also you want something. Again, we don't we don't ever want that big break. Yeah. Well, so that, and that's where I guess the, the question would then be: Was it would then that big gap come between the utility iron and the four iron? Well, we don't care though because there that's more of a tee club for you. Yeah. Well. Okay. That that that's a driving club. You know, I, I always look at it at as a modern set right now. You know, I got driver, yeah. I got three wood. You know, you see hybrids now, you see driving utilities, you're seeing seven woods. Yeah. Based on how that, or that player performs, what do you want to put in the back? You know, perfect example is like with the gophers. Most of them carry a five wood, a hybrid, yeah. and a driving club. Okay. To every tournament, and, and then, then make a decision. Make course. a decision yeah. on that golf, on the golf course, what they need. So I wouldn't be concerned. You know, I would kind of split. I would kind of split your bag up as as driver three with that three that three driving club. Those are those are my distance clubs. Yeah. Okay. My four through pitching wedge now are my distance control yeah. clubs, and then my wedges are my scoring clubs. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, yeah. Hey, so, Trevino came out with a thing the other day. He goes, man, he goes, if you learn to drive it and wedge it and then roll the putts, you know, the stuff in between takes care of himself. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? That means I just have to control how far I hit my iron. Right. Because I'm going to score because I'm going to drive it in play. I'm going to score when I get a wedge in my hand. But I just need that middle of the bag not to do anything stupid. I mean, yeah. to, for lack of a better term. You yeah. know, you don't need to be standing out there in a golf tournament and going, hey, you know, I'm trying to make the, the 36 hole cut or I'm, I'm a couple shots off the lead yeah. and got to pull your current six iron and go, how in the world am I going to get this close? I yeah. mean, you're already nervous already. The stress, you know, the stress right. meter of tournament golf already takes you up around that 10 number. Yeah. So, you know, because okay. I, I have the stress meter of one to 10 and, yeah. well, you yeah. know. Tournament golf immediately jumps you up to jumps about up. five or six because, yeah. but we don't need you to take higher because you're standing out there going, what do you do? I mean, it's kind of like the fitting we did with Emma yeah, with their hybrid, right? It's like, I, I pulled this club and I hate pulling this club. 
should that's, never sh- that you, should never be a, you a should thought, never yeah. have that in your golf bag yeah. you know and that's my job to get it out of your golf bag and that's why yeah. that you know that's why I've picked on you so hard. Yeah, you, you didn't pick I on picked me. on yeah. you hard for you the last couple of weeks because yeah. I want to help you play better golf right well, I think, well, today is certainly going to help already just because I know loft wise, like that shot right there is really telling to me. Right. Because I, I, right when I hit the ball, I knew I pulled that a right. lot. And I was thinking with any, really any iron I've ever had, it's see uh, like yeah. 15 yards further yeah. to see the same carry number essentially back to back was big. So I think for me, I think, I know we're, we're, we're probably short on time. We're getting short on time. So um, if I could, I think I would just want to test like the, Maybe the TaylorMade P7MB or the, okay. the, okay. Um, the, the, we have the Titleist blade back there. Uh, um, that is a good question. If we, we do, don't, then for sure the P7MB. Um, we do not, but we have, we have the. Uh, ultimately, or the, I guess the I-59 too, but yep. something I can, or I guess, yeah, the, the ping ones I tested. Just trying to get in terms of, now it, to me it's a look and feel thing because we kind of know the rest. Right. We know we'll go upright. Two degrees. Lanil will go with thirty-six degrees in the seven. We know the shaft we're gonna do, LZ six five. So from there, it's that's just a look and feel. And honestly, the, the LB ones are pretty darn good, and they're also a little cheaper than the other ones. So that's gonna play a factor as well. But that will um, play a factor in your decision, yeah. right? Yeah, they are LB ones are a little cheaper. That's I, I'm not. I'm not. Always trying to spend multi thousands of dollars on a new set, so. Uh, so you don't. I have can't. Yeah. Should right I? Should. Here, why don't we get this shot here? We can show people a little bit about what the LB ones look like. I'm gonna see what that looks like on there. Let's see if we can. Does it look good right now? Uh, my lighting probably isn't perfect, but there we go. So those are the. LB ones designed by Larry. So classic blade, feel good, but it's not like so. Larry, correct me. These aren't the mild like the carbon steel. It's a stainless steel. They right? are they are soft stainless, soft steel, stainless steel, just like the the old nine sixty two Bs. That's right. That everybody thought was the greatest golf club ever. So I know there was a few different models that you kind of put in and thought you right. were inspiring for this iron. So, um, but yeah, I I'm not trying to say uh, you know right. look and feel matter, but also price matters to me too. So. No, I I <laughs> totally, I totally understand. Um, we're just fine looking for some shafts here. Seeing some more questions come in the chat. Paul says, love the story of the LBs. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I, I think they all, there was such a demand for them right away that Larry had to make a bunch of lefties. I did. I had to make, I had to make a bunch of everything. <laughs> they got, there's uh, more lefties out there that would pay attention you to You talk for a second. I'm going to be right back. Oh, you're putting me on the spot now, Larry. I know. I'm sorry. Him. No, he's, some finning components back here, some, uh, back in the tour van but um yeah so for those who are maybe just joining um and aren't aware of what's all unfolded so um three years ago i was fit for irons i had a very different swing back then i was opening the face through the swing i was kind of more of a if i missed it it was a block and so trying to correct that um, i also didn't have the speed or this tendency to draw that i do now so at that time, I was fit into a combo of I-210s and I-500s from Ping uh, with Project X LZ 6.5 shafts. Um, and we adjusted the loss throughout there to obviously match up um, where you know I-500s traditionally are a little stronger than I-210s. But um, I think it made it work where the 7-iron was 32, 6-iron um, was 28, 8-iron was 36, and throughout uh, kind of you know mirroring it, 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 itself there. So. Um, last couple of years I've played that, but as my swing has changed and I've kind of had this draw tendency, um, uh, you know, and I've, you know, hit, basically I've improved my swing. I hit the ball a lot better. And so, um, through that, 
I hit the ball too far with not enough spin. And so because of that, now Larry has talked about, you know, he's talked to me about my game, my swing, my clubs, um, and recommended I get fit. And obviously the first thing he was saying the whole time was more loft, more loft. You need more loft in your clubs to get more spin. And so that's what inspired this today. Um, and what's ultimately going to lead me to do a new iron set for 2023. But um, anyway, I've been hitting the LB1 a lot today during the test, um, mostly because Larry was trying to show me kind of the, the impact that a 36 degree seven iron can have. And this shot right here is a big one for me to see that I pulled, pull a hooked one essentially, pull draw, like it over, overdrew it. And to see that ball not really go any further than I need, um, whereas a lot of other irons are going to see that ball travel 10 plus yards further with that pull hook, um, makes me really kind of buy into his idea of the loft being at 36. Um, also, I was a little bit, um, I was a little bit skeptical about hitting a blade and having that in my bag. But um, at this point, uh, the way in the way it feels, I think I'm very intrigued. So I'm back. You're back. So you've got some tools. I got tools. I got shafts. One club we did not hit that I want you to hit. Okay. Is the Callaway. Callaway Apex. Callaway Apex. So with that one, can we order that one? Uh, week or two sure. okay can we order this one weaker by uh yes okay of course we can wouldn't have brought it in if we couldn't wouldn't have walked all that way in my advanced age to get them for you. well All right. Apex MB. Apex MB X100. X100. So these are, I think, 30. Well, this is a really small looking head. It is. It's a little smaller looking head than mine. Yeah, definitely is smaller. This is more bladey. It's almost like blueprint. It's that small. Oh, that felt pretty pure. What oh, that spins low. Okay. Hit it again. I'll be honest, Larry. I don't know if I can hit this club any better than that. Well, see, and that's part of the reason I brought it. You know, everybody looks at golf clubs and goes, okay, well, hey, I want to try this. I want to try that. Well, I mean, all blades aren't alike. I mean, you look at this blade, you look at I-59, you look at mine. I mean, there's... They're very different. Yeah, they're very different from a standpoint of yeah. confidence at address. See, that one I missed. Try one more, this one. Okay. But again, your initial reaction is, hmm, uh, you know. It definitely, it, it just, right away, it struck me how much smaller this was yeah. than the other ones. And that's why, you know, hey, we, pre we, preach, it, we preach it a thousand times over again. That's why you got to come get fit. Right, yeah. Because if, if you just decided that, you know, hey, I, I saw... You know, I saw Xander Shoffley or somebody, you know, win with this club and they're really cool looking clubs and they're really great. And all of a sudden you buy it and you look at it and you go, holy crap, I might shank every shot with this. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah. again, you don't, you, you can't do that. We don't, we don't want that yeah. to happen. See, so this is Titleist. This is the CB. We don't have the MB head. Mm -hmm. Same loss though. Okay. Okay. So let's see, let's see how, let's see how this performs for us. This one, I see, I, that one looks like way, the Callaway looks way smaller than this. It does. Well, that's not going to work. Viewers can remove that one from your memory. The trackman didn't even want to count it, so. That one's better. 
definitely a firmer feel to this one. Yep. Everything's just that I'm getting kind of that. You're right. I think is that six thousand range is right where I'm going to be with spin here, no matter what I choose. Yeah, absolutely. Which is not a bad. And that's why it's better. You know, than that's why it's important from a loft standpoint. What we do. That one felt really good. Yeah. Okay, but there, but again, there's there's a club, the correct the correct loft for you. Mm -hmm. This one just feels a little firmer than the other. Yep. It's a little toe chunk. Punish for that one a little bit, which makes sense. Well, I like this better than the Callaway, I think. Okay. The Callaway is just too small. All right. It was just too small. Hit that one good. What's that? There you go. So that's kind of that same pole. Okay. I like the Titleist. Good okay. option. So I would definitely, I would definitely do, I would definitely do a set of MBs for you. Like the. Uh, and we can order them at a degree week at 36. Okay. Yeah. Because I think, yeah, it's the Titleist MBs. Okay. Yeah. So let's hit, now let's hit the tail end. Okay. If they can make me hit irons like Morikawa, I'm I'm in. Well, but I don't think that's how it works. Do you have all that time to practice like Morikawa does? No. Okay. You have you have you have to do you have to do content. Right. Okay. We well, go ahead. Let's see what you think here. And again, it's look. I like this. You know, I, I have to tell you, I like this. It's a little bit bigger blade. Yeah, I, I've noticed that. I mean, I'm I'm gonna actually set it down like because. I think your, is this the right club? Seven? No, that's a six. They might have it over there, actually. Yeah, you have it over there. But um, the LB was, it's it's a little bigger than most blades, I think. Is that, would you agree with that? It's a little longer. That? Yeah, I went, Long, I went. Longer length. That's, that's I guess that's yeah, the way I to went, describe it. I went with a um, Mizuno MP33, yeah. which is a little bit bigger blade. Yeah, I like that. Because this kind of feels like it fits in there, too. Yeah, that feels pretty good. And there you go. And there's our there's our spin rate. There's our shot. I mean, I can't complain about that at all. No. Let's see here. Maybe a touch heavy. Yep. But that I mean, well, how far did the last one carry? One seventy seven? One seventy eight? Yeah. Okay, so hit me, one, hit me one more with that. Yeah, I definitely hit it a little fast, but it didn't really matter that much. Went after that one. You can probably tell. But there we go. There's, there's 59. Yeah. So when you turn it over, the launch goes down a little bit, but we still get great height. We get good land. You know, we're in that 6,000 range, you know. The big thing to me is we just need a full set of these. Yeah. You know, we can't make that we can't make that six iron break anymore to a right. you know, quote, game improvement club because it's gonna kill you. And I wouldn't, you know, I would start these again, I would start these a little weaker. I'd start them a degree weaker too and let you go play golf and see what you do with them. Yeah. I do, I do like these too. I think, I think these are the favorites of the ones you just brought over. I think the, the P7 MBs. Yeah. Well, and then, but also too, then it gives us the ability to, what do we want to do? What, what do we want to do on the long iron side? You know, we got 770s, we have 790s. Yeah. We also can do, I can do the same kind of set, you know, the Morikawa set where yeah. we do a 770 maybe in the three iron or in the four iron, 
do the five iron maybe in the I do like that idea quite a bit. Yeah, so we do, we'll, we'll just do, you know, in for your longer one, just do a 790. Yeah. Do a 790. For the three in the, iron you're Yeah, do a for 790 that. in the three iron. Yeah. Then we can go 770 in the four iron. We go five and six in the CB. Yeah. Or the MC, sorry. Yeah. And then we do, then we do blades. Then we do blades. Down. Six, yeah, we do blades from seven iron on down. Yeah. And, I, and, do, I, them, and do them all at the blade loss. Right. So they match up, but you get a little bit of forgiveness. You don't have to sit there and worry about, oh, I pulled the four iron out. I'm, I'm a little scared well, that if the, I miss it, yeah. what's going to happen? Well, I think the problem was, you know, when you blend it, an I-210, I-500, those are very different. They are. They're hot ones, hollow body ones. Right. I mean, it's when you go from the MB to the MC, it's not like it's a great. I mean, it's they're built from the same stuff. It's just you know, it's just a little, a little more, bit, a little bit more forgiveness. Yeah, and it's it's that kind. Of, yeah, you know, in my opinion, in this day and age, with the performance of the golf ball and the speed of players, you know, hey, back in back in the day in titles, we made a set of you know, 735 CMs that were that went from cavity backs. To my, and I'll be honest, when we did that set, I expected pretty much every set of good player clubs yeah. past that to turn into a mixed set, yeah, a mixed cavity set or a mixed cavity to blade set. Yeah. And then it just kind of died out. Well, but we're doing it. I mean, players are playing. I mean, Max Homa just, I mean, he's doing it with T100S. T100 and then and then yeah. MB. It's a different. Just more yeah, yeah. doing it, you know. Yeah. So, hey, I mean, I don't hate copying what those guys do. They 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 do okay for themselves, you yeah. know. And it's a scorecard, not a postcard. There's no pictures. There's no style points. Your only job, your only job is to put the lowest number in there. How you get it done does it does it really matter? No, it really doesn't. Yeah, you know. So. Standard length, I would order them one degree up, and yeah. we do a combo set in X100 for you, and I think I see how love they that. go. I love yeah. that. Yeah, because yeah. I definitely like this look the best of those ones that you brought over, and yep. then the ability to combo it. I think it, I don't know. There's just I think there's just some doubt, and I think you got this in my mind too. Like there's just some doubt in my brain of yeah, I see hitting a, the blade and hitting. Yeah, I see a few questions here about Wilson staff stuff. You know what? My opinion is once you get your specs, then it's then it's up to me. The golf club becomes the golf club becomes interchangeable. Yeah, you know, sub seventy makes great stuff. Wilson makes great stuff. Frickson makes great stuff. Yeah. Blueprints, make, you know, there's everything available. But what we know is we need a weaker lofted golf club. Yeah, you know, we can't play with thirty two degrees. We need to play with something at thirty five or thirty six degrees. And we need something stiffer in the shaft, and we need something a little bit upright. Then it becomes interchangeable. You yeah. know, every you know, you look at tour players that go from one company to another. Yeah. Okay, golf club changes are easy as long as they have their specs. Right. Golf ball changes are hard because that's feel and touch and yeah. spin. That's a big well, and deal. We, I know we you always emphasize the the look and feel part too. So like it, when it does come down to the specs, like it is right now for me, yeah, it's absolutely. like, all right, which one do you like the best? Which yeah, one feels I mean, the best? We, which I one mean, we could, sit, we could sit confidence. here ultimately and try every, every golf club that's manufactured. Yeah. If we get it in the right, if we get it in the right lawn, if we get it in the right loft and the right lie and the right shaft, it's going to work for you. Yeah. So then the question becomes, and that's, you know, and that's where you have to have a discussion with your fitter and sit there and say, Hey, you know, what am I going to be the most comfortable with? You yeah. know, I don't want you. Be, I don't want you going out there being scared. You know, I brought the Callaway in, and you looked at it. I mean, your first, you know, yeah. personally, after your first look and your first comment, I, you know, in a regular fitting, I, I'd pull that club. Yeah, wouldn't even, wouldn't even have you. I'd have you hit one shot and go, that's it, you're done. Which is more or less what I did. But yeah, which yeah. is pretty much I, what you did. I like, I like this setup here. I like this. Yeah, so T7MB. Yeah. Look at that. I mean, it didn't even, it's still only 182. Like, that's what I like. 
is yeah. that, 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 that miss that has become my miss is that kind of overcorrecting draw. Right. Doesn't go any further. It's still right. just a little bit left of the green. I can get up. Okay. Down. So do me a favor. Try to hit me a little cut shot. Oh, now so, you're going to really challenge me. So here. if you're going to hit this a little bit up in the air and you had a little back right pin. All right. You know, maybe it's not a cut. Maybe it's just a little hold on. Let's see if I can do that. I used to be able to do this so easily like three years ago. I might be overdone. Yeah, a little overdone, but look at look at love the spin right on that. That's kind of what's supposed to happen with the spin, right? When you yeah, can, when let's you hit try that one more time. Just maybe start it on the right line this time. Oh, I did it again. Same thing. That's the same exact golf shot. Yeah. See, I used to be able to do this, Larry. And I, now, it's, now it's just a draw or a straight ball. Well, okay. Do Try that. hit that shot one more time. This one? Yeah. The, the cut. So, so here's the thing. If I'm, if I'm open and my shoulders are open. Which is kind of what I'm trying to set you up. you got to swing along your body line. So you yeah. bring the club inside. you gotta, you got to take the head of the club and think you're going to hit me in the head with it. Yeah. Which, God, it's funny because three years ago I was totally like this with my yeah. traditional normal yeah. stock swing. And now yeah. it's... I mean, if you're going to try to move the golf ball, you got to swing along your body line. You can't open up and then that might be and it. then come on hit your normal shot. Yeah. So there you go. So there's a better looking shot. But look at the spin rate. It's still you know you only lose a few yards on the carry. That's a beautiful golf yeah, shot. Right I'm, I'm in. I'm in. That's so I there. Think, there you good. go. I think we're you good. know, I think we got a lot of great questions. I think there was, you know, yeah. we've got a lot of information. I think one of the things that that you know we talk about at second swing, and I think especially as being a, a good player, a good player needs to come in and create a relationship with a fitter. Okay. Yeah. I think they should create a relationship with a second swing fitter because I yeah, think we're well. the best. But on the but on the other side, if you're not, create a relationship with some fitter. Yeah. Okay. Because if you want to take your game to the next level, that's where you're going to be. I mean, we always talked about for years when I was at Titleist as this relationship, okay, it used to be a triangle where you had the player, the instructor, and the fitter. Well, now in this day and age, it's kind of turned into a box because now it's the player, the fitness guy, yeah. the instructor. Psychology, and you know. And maybe it turns yeah. into five-sided yeah, with yeah. the psychology. But but you have to create this relationship because if you really want to get better, you know, this is this is a start to Drew getting better yeah. at playing golf and enjoying it better. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in in not you know, people ask me all the time, you know, what do you play? Well, I've played the same specs for a long time. Now, am I thinking about shafts these days? Yeah, because it's sixty three years old and two hip replacements, you know, and I don't necessarily go to the gym, as you can all tell. Um, you know, it, are we losing? Are we losing some speed? Absolutely. But on the other side of that, as your golf swing changes, yeah. You know, my golf swing's gotten much shorter now. Yeah. Because I don't turn as much, so I deliver the club a little differently. You, you need a, right. I need, I need some stability in the shaft. Yeah. So, do you really change? Uh, not necessarily, but that's where, that's where just you know. Like I always like to say, the ball doesn't know how old you are. So if right. I want to, if I want to come in and I'm, you know, hey, sixty-three years old was a really good player at one time. I can get still get it around, but it I don't play the same way. Yeah. Okay. You can't one. You can't recapture the past because the calendar kills you. On the other side of that, you also take a look, and just because you're sixty-three year old doesn't mean you go to the rack that says senior shafts and you buy senior right. shafts. Yeah. Okay, that's where create a relationship with a fitter. Yeah. Okay, and we have fitters of all levels, all ages. I mean, I I just think it it people would be so much happier. Yeah. In their golf game, if they would just you know, and just listen to the fitter and have this open up yeah. and back. And that's why I think it was great. That's why. It, you know, after I picked on you for a yeah. few weeks about doing, I think it, it's great that we had this content because now it gives you an opportunity to see what really happens and kind of what happens at second swing. Yeah. You know, between us all. I mean, yeah. we're just golfers helping golfers, yeah. right? 
It and, is true. You know, true. I just want you to play better. Yeah. And well, now I, I will. Yeah. I and, will. You know, we, we know what to order. Yep. Um, so let's, let's uh, just for the, for the viewers, as we kind of wrap up, maybe they can ask a few more final questions. We'll wrap up. We'll just, okay. Let's, um, let's go through the final specs here for like what, what's going to be ordered. And so just so they are aware okay. of what actually we're going to order, on, so. we're going to order, uh, we're going to order a 793 iron. Yep. We're going to order a 774 iron. Yep. We're going to do an MC five and six. Yep. And then we're going to do MB seven through pitching wedge. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to bend the, those other ones a little bit weaker yep. to match up to the MB lofts. Yep. We're going to put X 100s in standard length and one degree upright mm -hmm. and then from there we're gonna see how you perform and play as i always like to do we're gonna do a follow-up oh, yeah. you know we sit very close together at the office so we have a lot of follow-up <laughs> anyway but <laughs> yeah. but i always encourage players to come back and follow up and, and say hey how's that set working you know you can do you can help people a lot here in the bay but ultimately, it's still when you get out there and you've got a seven or an eight iron and you've got to hit a shot, little side hill, little grassy lie. How's yeah. that club going to perform? Right. That's that's the you true that's it. the true test. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. All right. Um, I mean, I, I think we are a thousand percent better than where you were with the set you walked in, but your golf game has all changed. It's evolved. Yeah. You know. Hey, work with a lot of junior players. I mean, their their golf game might evolve every three or six six months, right? Because of their they're, size they're and their speed, so and yeah, because they yeah. play so much. So, create the relationship with the fitter. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Grip wise, so I was you, actually I, I I was a, a mid size with the other set. Should I stick with that? You think? I mean, it's, I know it's a kind of feel thing more than anything, but you know, I I would say yes. Okay. If you're comfortable with that. Your tendency is to miss a little bit left, a little bit bigger grip will kind of calm down that hand. Okay. You know, what I don't like to do is feel like, you know, when you're, when you put the club in your hand, you know, you're, you're trying to figure out how I should hold it. Yeah. You know, do I want to hold it at my fingertips? You know, I, I've always used actually a little smaller grip. Okay. I wear, I wear an extra large glove but it's a cadet extra large. So I have a very large palm and I have very short fingers. So for me, you know, everybody goes, well, why, why don't you play? I can't tell you the time that I put bigger grips on my clubs and gone out and played one round of golf and came back home and tore them off the net, tore them you off tried that it once night. And it never worked? Try it and they never, they never work yeah. because I, you know, I want to grip it in my finger. Okay. So to so me, it's kind of a feel. Yeah, to bit. me, it's about comfort. It's about feel. It's about what your tendency is you tend to do. I mean, my tendency is hit that shot right there. Yeah. So I don't release, I don't release the club as well as you do. Yeah. So smaller grips to me helps me kind of release it. The bigger grip, I always right. felt like it was like this okay. way. So yeah, it, it's, a, it's a lot about comfort. I mean, you know, we have a lot of people come in here and they grab a grip and they'll grab them off the wall and it's like these midsize feel great. You know, it, it, there's a little bit more to it than sure, that. Sure, sure. But I would stay if but you're. Since I, but since I have this tendency, to, yeah. Well, and again, not this shot, what's the, the easiest thing to change on your golf club? Just get a knife. Yeah, we, ju yeah, we just get a knife and we cut them off yeah. and we put some. We put something. We put something a little bit. We put something a little bit smaller sure. on it. Okay. But I would I would stay with what your comfort is. Yeah. Because again, we want to we want to see how the loft in the shaft in the heads yeah. perform for you. Yeah. I actually you think know? last time I was fit it was the the grip size thing was pretty much only a static fit. Yeah. Um so it's good then that kind of with this tendency now to go left it still actually might benefit a little bit anyway. Yeah. I mean, I, mean I can't tell I, I could tell you some stories about guys wanting to change their grips on tour and having players that we change their grips three or four times. They they'd be on the range, we put them in a different grip. They'd play nine holes. The caddy would run in, in between, in change. between the practice. They want them change, and yeah. then, then they go back out, and the caddy's back in it after the last nine holes, and they're changing them again back to what they normally play. Yeah, see, I'm play. not, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, 
Um, I've, do, I've done that in the past. Well, all right. Each their own then. But, well, but, <laughs> you know, but I like to, you know, I like to investigate. I like to try, you know. Yeah. But do I go back to the, do I go back to the same old style that I always use? Probably. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> push, comes to, push comes to shove, yeah. Yeah, well, we've taken enough of these people's time, uh, but I think we can kind of wrap it there. I got a good set of clubs. I got a good fitting. Um, the, uh, I think the last thing we can wrap up with is the golfers out there, if you're interested in getting fit, come to Second Swing. Um, and if you're interested in getting fit and have it being filmed and on YouTube, that's also something you can do. Uh, you can reach out to us. Uh, you can actually email me, which is my first name, dot last name, uh, at secondswing.com. So drew.mahole at secondswing.com. You can email me, and we will do what we can to get that set up to get you fit on camera. Um, but otherwise, if you don't want to do the camera thing, it's totally fine. Uh, cool. You can also just get fit at Second Swing in any of our store locations. And uh, somebody, you know, that goes through the same exact thing as Larry. We'll have the expertise, the training, everything, uh, same process here. So it'll be... It'd be good. You'll play better golf. You'll get a set. Maybe not the exact set like mine with four different clubs or whatever, but um, you'll be playing better golf. Well, and I'll be in Scottsdale for the month of February. There you go. On the fitting schedule. So if somebody's in Scottsdale and wants to come over, I'll be on the fitting schedule for the month of February. And then I'll be back here at Minnetonka, um, March 3rd, fitting again. So if you want to come on in and get fit, be more than happy to do it. And, um, you know, and just, just gather information. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I gather a lot of information today. So. Well, and we've talked, to, you know, we've had the fortune of talking in between and, yeah, and, I know. and you yeah. know, giving you some good, good natured razzing about your set of clubs. <laughs> but we saw exactly what the problem is. And that's, you know what, folks? Find out, what, you know, if you've got something in your golf bag, if you've got a club or if you've got a gap that doesn't work, there's so many ways to fix it. Yeah. Just get it. Come in and get it fixed. Yeah. Well, I think that's, we can leave it there. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, like I said, if you want to get fit, you go to secondsweet.com and schedule. Or if you want to get fit on camera, you can email me and we'll get that set up. But thank you all for joining. Uh, stay tuned for more stuff on the YouTube channel, and we'll see you next time.